October 2012, Hurricane Sandy started churning up the East Coast. A thousand miles across, it was in size, the largest North Atlantic hurricane ever recorded. Its winds were strong, but Sandy's biggest threat was the huge pileup of water called a storm surge. As Sandy grew closer, a second problem loomed. Depending on Sandy's speed, the storm's peak surge could arrive at high tide. That would make flooding worse by several feet. New York City has 520 miles of coastline, much of it low lying, so flooding is a particular threat. Officials expected the area in blue to be at risk. It includes about 33 square miles. It is called a 100-year flood zone. That means there's one chance in 100 that it will flood in any year. And as New Yorkers would discover, this map drawn up in 1983 seriously underestimated the extent of the flooding to come, shown here in red. Preparations were intense. Con Edison cut power to some neighborhoods to prevent damage. After subway shut down on Sunday evening, October 28th, workers shifted trains to high ground and removed signal and control systems from at-risk stations. The Coast Guard sent ships out to sea and closed the harbor. Ferries stopped running. The city ordered residents of Flood Zone 1, shown here in red, to seek shelter elsewhere. As night fell, New York braced for the worst. Sandy made landfall in New Jersey at 7.30 p.m. In New York Harbor, high tide was at about 9 p.m. and the worst of the storm surge arrived there shortly afterward. Low-lying coastal areas were hit hard. Some were inundated. In Coney Island, the Rockaways and the neighborhoods surrounding Jamaica Bay, waves swept over unprotected beaches, destroying homes, businesses, and the renowned boardwalks. Fires ranged out of control. The south and east shores of Staten Island, directly exposed to wind and waves, may have been the worst hit. Much of that world's power grid collapsed. In lower Manhattan, the storm tide reached 14.1 feet, the highest in at least 170 years. East River tunnels and vulnerable subway stations flooded. Seawater poured over the flood wall at the 13th Street power station. The result was a dramatic arc visible for many miles. Most of Manhattan below 39th Street plunged into darkness. For many, the night was chaos, as neighborhoods around the city lost power. But by morning, the tide had receded, and the storm surge had passed. New Yorkers awoke to a changed city. In some cases, damage was worse in places where, over the centuries, New Yorkers had altered the landscape. This historic shoreline of Lower Manhattan in blue has been extended into the East River. Jamaica Bay has been dredged far beyond its historic depth. Storms with as much destructive power as Sandy rarely hit New York City, but they will happen again, and the area remains vulnerable. The city is developing solutions to cope with future storms. Vulnerable subway stations in light blue are being flood-proofed. In these highlighted areas, wetland restoration and dune building will help fortify the landscape's natural protections. Protective structures are going up in some flood-prone areas. The revised 100-year flood zone maps put 50 square miles, 130 square kilometers at risk. 17% of the city's area and these maps don't even include sea level rise. Flood projections that do include sea level rise look like this. Some experts think we should prepare for six feet, two meters of sea level rise by 2100. Other estimates are less dire, but uncertainty over how much to expect is a huge problem for emergency planners. New York's location has been the source of its greatness but living where a major river meets a mighty ocean will always involve risk. In the era of climate change, 
facing those risks and preparing for them is more crucial than ever. Now, take a minute to explore some Sandy stories.